The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Pickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Monday morning, 60 minutes to go until that opening bell. We got a mixed, pretty calm market to start things off. Right now, you're looking at the S&P futures, negative by about five points, trading at 3207. We got the NASDAQ and Q futures positive, NASDAQ positive. What's new with that? NQ positive by 26 points, trading 10,649. The Dow negative by 67 points, trading 26,453. We have gold catching a bid, gold up about eight dollars right now you're looking at the contract at 1817 we got silver silver up 30 cents at 2006 let's jump to silver to start it off we haven't started a program off with silver yet folks but check out that acceleration just since last night from 1960 to 2006 you put this on a daily that's a high for the last year you put it on a three-year weekly, that's a high as well, and we'll back it up to see where we are in context. We got a long way to go, but we're back to whether it's talking about 2014. Are we over this price level? No, we're not quite. The July of 16, we're looking at a high of 21.22, but quite an acceleration, folks, from March 11.64, now trading above $20 in the price of silver. Putting gold in that context, quite a cup and, cup and handle formation. Look at this cup, 19.23, the high for gold. That's a monthly, putting it on the daily, quite an acceleration. We're coming up to the highs that we made on July 8th of 1829. You got the gold contract training at 1818. Notes and bonds, higher price, low yield. What's new, folks? We got the 10-year. Let's drill it down a little bit on a 15-minute. The 10-year up five ticks at 139.16. We're looking at a 30-year right now up about 15 ticks at 180.06. We're looking at a 10-year yield of 0.6. 1% right now. We got the crew contract. Where are we? Above $40 at $40.41. Last week, we're as high as $41.26. For some context on this area, we're at in crude, right? You back it up the beginning of the year. Where's our, there's our dotted line to start 2020. We're floating with $65. Remarkable. The price falls out of bed on March 6th when the Saudis decide to slash prices. We open. So that is March 6th. You open March 9th in the realm of $27 after trading the previous day as high as $46. But guess what? We've been flirting with this area. I mean, you back it up to June 8th, it's July 20th. Talking about six weeks. June 8th, we were trading within three pennies of where we're trading at right now, folks. We've just kind of been hanging out, and it's really remarkable. The low that we had from March 6th, 41.05. Crude just struggling to get above that level. We'll see where we end up on that crude contract. Jumping around, we're going to start off with some of the FANG stocks today. Why not? You get the NASDAQ futures positive by 32 points. Last week, of course, eclipsing 11,000 on Monday. We trade lower to 10,358 by Tuesday. End of last week, options expiration, but pretty tame, tame options expiration week. Even taking a look at the S&Ps in terms of where we sputtered out, right? We saw the action on Monday with the rest of the markets. We had quite a day Tuesday. We clawed all back and make new recent highs in the S&P on Wednesday. And then this trading range, I mean, Tuesday, you're, you're looking at a trading range the entire day in the S&Ps are about 10 to 15 points. You did see a little bit of a sell-off, so we'll back it up to where we were in the futures. Last night, futures opened pretty much flat. We get some action at 9 o'clock. We get some action also at 4.30. Of course, you have Asia. You got Europe. Asia this morning, pretty flat. Shanghai up 3.1% after getting clobbered last week. We got Europe. DAX up about 5 tenths percent. FTSE down 5 tenths percent. The CAC roll just about even. All right, let's take a look at some of those FANG stocks before we jump around to some of the earnings stuff. Huge week in earnings. We got about 25% of the S&P reporting their earnings this week alone. We'll get into those numbers in a moment. Right now, Amazon a hair under 3,000, but look at that trade higher. We're almost $40 from where we closed on Friday. Amazon right at 3,000 on the dot practically. Whoops, AAPL for Apple. 385, pretty calm action from last week. Looking at Microsoft shares up a bit from 202 to 205. 
Facebook shares, so story out this weekend, uh, Disney, one of my favorites in the long term, Disney pulling a dramatic amount of their advertising from Facebook. But folks, you just can't hold down the Facebook, the Facebook. I mean, we just made all time highs last week. <laughs> what is the 13th? Oh, Monday, all time highs. What happened to the boycott in Facebook? Yeah, uh, we'll see if that uh, becomes a reality. But right now, folks, Nothing really affecting. Let's see what kind of a trend line I got here on this chart. Let's back it up. Three-year weekly. No, nope, we're going to look at a monthly on this one. There it is. Look at that, look at that acceleration. From July of 2013 at $24, we're a 10-bagger up at 242, and it's been kind of a rocket ship. You know, you put a linear regression on this line. Talk about some uh, some irregularities going below. But if you back, if, I mean, if you push this trend line. Um, We'll extend it to the right. Even if you pull back to this trend line, folks, that's about a 20% haircut. You're talking about under 200 right now if you just pull back and bounce off that trend line. So watch out for Facebook. Um, this, this, you know, we'll, we'll jump right into Let's jump into the stories. One of them is Facebook. We'll get into it. Facebook and Disney. Disney slashing ad spending on Facebook, according to the journal, joining hundreds of other companies that have paused ad spending on social media giants platform. Disney was Facebook's top U.S. advertiser during the first half of this year. Now that's a big one, right? But what's going on? Folks, I mean, Facebook's down two bucks. But again, I just showed you, we just made all time highs on Monday, the market not yet thinking that this is gonna materialize. If you're telling me that their biggest advertiser in the first six months of the year is joining hundreds of other companies of pulling their advertising, what the market is saying right now at least, whether it's right or not, is that this is temporary. You know, that, that the world, that, that the machine that Zuckerberg has built for advertising, for targeting, et cetera, is just too good to pass up for these companies for the long haul. Now, hopefully, they, uh, they, they force Facebook to have a little bit of responsibility for the environment they're creating, everything going on in that company. Um, I'm personally not a big fan of Facebook, man. It's just, it's just ranting and raving and complaining and all that stuff. I am a fan of Instagram because I like pictures. There's no political, you know, and even that's turning into now it's a picture. Guess what? Pictures. Oh, it's a picture of somebody with uh, a quotation of words to get the message out there. Nonetheless, Facebook, a giant, but really unfazed when you look at Disney uh, pulling their advertising. Disney shares pretty unchanged this morning. Uh, I got some Fibonacci numbers on here. So you have the recent high of 153.41 pre-COVID. That's last year. You fall out of bed from about 140 in late February with the rest of the market. If you focus on the run-up we had from about March 19th, we make recent highs on June 5th, the highs in the market. We've pulled back to almost a perfect 382 retracement. We'll see how Disney reacts to that 127.83 price point. Um, as we challenge that A to B equals C to D, and folks, that would be quite an A to B equals C to D. You're talking about 79 up to 127. That's almost a $46 ABC. You call it from 108, you're up there right near the all-time highs of about 153, 154. If that becomes an ABC, we'll see if that hits as you approach that from June 8th. And with that in mind, check out the front page of TFNN, folks. I just launched my new trading service. Let me pull it up and find that page. Come on, where are we at, folks? Where are we at? There we are. Head on over to the front page of TFNN, Rocket Equities and Options Report. You saw the Fibonacci numbers out there. I got the report almost done for this morning. I'm gonna put that out. You can lock in 50% savings with the promo code ROCKET. Check it out on the front page of TFNN and you will lock that in as a charter member. I'll go over the details when we get back from the break. We'll be right back in three minutes. Stay tuned, folks. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&P is negative by about four. NASDAQ futures positive by 38. We got the Dow negative by 39. As I was mentioning, head on over to the front page of TFNN. Rocket Equities and Options launched it a week ago today. I appreciate everyone signing up last week for it. I'm going to be putting out a report today. Probably having updates most of the week this week as well. We had one position that we started off with for a long-term position last week. We're going to be looking at adding to that this week. Uh, big week of earnings, as I mentioned. We'll go into some of those companies that are coming out. Big week of volatility. I mean, we're sitting right here on the VIX. Remarkable when you think about the S&Ps are at 3209 and the VIX elevated. We spiked to 30, uh, excuse me, 27 from 2541. And that's when you saw just the S&Ps pull back a tiny bit overnight, right? You saw a little bit of a sell off on the S&Ps. We were as low as 3192, almost, what is the low? 3190, we wrote 18 points off the low. The VIX looking very timid. Anytime we get a little bit of a pullback, you're seeing those spikes. We'll see where we go, but we're gonna look at some long-term, some short-term trades. There'll be a report published out later this morning for the weekly report. Check it out. You can sign up for the monthly report. It's usually $97 a month for this month only. So July 20th through the end of July, you can save 50% as a charter member. Just enter promo code ROCKET, add that code, you'll see the savings. You'll pay $48.50 as opposed to $97.50 50 cent, 50 off the normal monthly price, and you lock that in for as long as you remain a subscriber, folks. I hope uh, hope this letter's uh, around uh, for a while, and hopefully you lock that in, you stay with me, and we get some good results. We'll see what happens, but check it out on the front page of TFNN. Dot com And our man Basil Chapman, shout out to him. He's got an announcement. He's got some action coming up later this week as well on the opening call. Can't go wrong with the gold report right now either, folks. Lots of good action in this market. Let's jump over to gold before we get into those markets with some earnings. I mean, check out this acceleration we're getting. Even at 8.30, look at that volume bar, right? Spike in 18.21.40 in the price of gold, currently trading 18.19. All right, in terms of what else we have. So Goldman. Goldman's hiking a Amazon's price target yet again. Let me see if we get the news on it. No news pulling up there yet. We're trading at 3,004. You see the action, right? We're up from about 29.55. Amazon just not stopping the heat. But in terms of earnings, okay, getting into it. So already this morning, we got Halliburton out with their numbers, trading higher from about 13 
to almost 14. We also have, let's see, what else do we have? I saw in the den our man Dave White. I don't think Darden's out, right? But for some reason, they're, uh, are they getting some action this morning? Yeah, they're down about 75-41, just the service. Maybe that's uh, a factor of the coronavirus ripping across the country. It's going to be hard for these restaurants, folks, especially in Florida. Uh, nobody is talking about hanging out in restaurants inside in this state as coronavirus rages. Okay, in terms of earnings, what else we have going on? Like I mentioned, 25% of the S&P reporting some of the big companies that you'll be looking for. We're going to get Lockheed Martin tomorrow, Coca-Cola tomorrow before the market as well. Texas Instruments, Capital One, United Airlines, Snapchat on Wednesday, Baker Hughes, back to that oil. Uh, we're going to get Biogen, some of the biotechs, HCA Healthcare. We also get Chipotle, Align Technology, Tesla on Wednesday. We haven't looked at Tesla yet. Shame on us, folks. Tesla, 1511, pretty muted action. The high, 1794 last week for Tesla. Seems to sputter it out and be a little comfortable right around that 1500 number for right now. We also get Microsoft on Wednesday as well. Talk about a rocket ship, Microsoft, up on more than $2 right now with a bid ask of above 205. For some context, whoops, on where we've been on Microsoft shares, quite a rocket ship from the low in March of 132, I believe. Yeah, 132.52, we're sitting at 202.88 on Microsoft shares. We also get Las Vegas Sands on Wednesday. These casino stocks, pretty hard hit. Thursday, back to airlines, we get Southwest, Man, some of these stocks, right? Let's check out some of these airlines as we come in. So Southwest, bid ask 3412, pretty calm action in terms of unchanged. And what did we say we get? We also get United on Tuesday, United Airlines 3392, pretty unchanged as well. We're gonna get, I'm just scanning what we get. We get Alaska Air on Thursday, we get Twitter on Thursday, E-Trade, Boston Beer, Skyworks, and on Friday we get Schlumberger, Verizon, American Express, Bloomin' Brands, and Honeywell before the open on Friday. All right, jumping around to stocks making moves this morning. So Halliburton, as I said, trading higher on their numbers, five cents a share in the last quarter. They were looking for a loss of 11 cents, not bad. Revenue came in below estimates, however, amid a significant drop in global activity. So big deal in the oil sector as well. Chevron, they're gonna buy Noble Energy in a $5 billion stock swap deal, valuing Noble at 7.6% above Friday's close. Largest oil patch takeover deal since the pandemic hit. CVX, Chevron, let me drill this down. Pretty unchanged on this. You see the volatility, right? 87.23 and Noble NBL is their symbol. Yeah, as you would expect, trading higher. They said 7% premium from Friday's close. We spiked to 11.60. We're currently sitting 10.69 on their numbers. Cal Maine Foods out with their numbers. Largest egg producer reported quarterly profit of a buck 24 a share, four cents above, revenue slightly below. They benefited from a rebound in egg prices following a long period of depressed prices. Consumers stocked up. I bought a lot of eggs myself in the last few months. Company will not pay a fourth quarter dividend based on metrics involved in its variable dividend policy. Not too surprising that companies aren't handing out cash, but uh, pretty unchanged. 44.16 for CalMain Foods from 44.22. eBay in, an, in nearing a deal to sell its classified ads unit to Norway's Adaventa for roughly $8 billion. Cash and stock deal could be announced as soon as today. eBay shares trading higher on that news from 58.13 to 59. We covered Facebook in terms of Disney pulling their advertising, biggest advertiser during the first half of the year. Southwest, nearly a quarter of Southwest Airlines pilots have accepted either early retirement or voluntary leave offers. Remarkable, folks. About 2,200 pilots will leave the airline. That's, that's staggering. You know, you're talking about a quarter of their pilots just gone overnight because things ain't coming back. Delta told pilots furloughs could be avoided if they agreed to a reduction in guaranteed minimum pay. Again, these airlines just dealing with all sorts of woes here. KKR, they're in talks for a potential $4 billion acquisition of a medical clinic and hospital operator Elson. Okay. GlaxoSmithKline, they're buying a 10% in a biotech firm CureVac, betting on the success of the mRNA technology currently being used to develop COVID-19 vaccines. Yeah, not surprising to see some of those biotechs trying to get their uh, their their fingers in some of the uh, potential vaccine technology. So Uber, talk about this company a lot. I see some 
decent long-term potential for Uber. Signed off on a four-year agreement with Google Unit to use Google Maps platform rides and delivery services. I wonder how that hits it, right? What were they, what were they already using? Google, pretty unchanged at 3250, putting this on some context. Uh, this is going to be one of the charts I take a look at in the Rocket Equities and Options Report. Pretty interesting when you look. They're just coming right back to that 382. We dive to 1371. Uh, at this point in the market lows, you have their CEO and come out and say, hey, listen, we got a lot of cash. We got like $6 billion right now. Even if business goes down 80% this year, we're still going to have about a couple billion dollars in cash. And the market likes it. But man, they got some woes right now. Uber trading about 32.55. They're going to be using Google Maps for the next three or four years. Stay tuned, folks. S&P's minus about three at 32.11. NASDAQ futures positive by 34. Big week of earnings. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&P's pulling back a little bit. S&P's flat right now. Actually, not pulling back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Edging up three points. We get the markets now. Dow positive as well. You see the little tick up. S&P's trading at about 32.14 coming into that opening bell. We talked about Amazon briefly. Amazon. So that price target that they got from Goldman and at Jefferies, street high, how about $3,800? From uh, Goldman and Jeffries, Amazon sitting at about 3000 right now. Quite the move. We had a question in the den talking about oil. So our man Z is talking about uh, 
any dominant companies in the oil patch interest you? So when I look at the oil patch, right, oil's gonna be around, it's not going anywhere. What I look at in oil though, that's really a struggle, you put this on a long-term chart, we're right back to where oil sputtered around at basically between like 1983 and 2003. I mean, in 83, we're trading at $27.84. Yeah, we're trading in $29 in May of 83. Well, you fast forward to 2003, we're trading at $30. You have craziness going on here. There's always a pullback. And then, of course, the volatility that we had recently, down to about $6.50. Uh, long term, it's tough for me to figure out what's going to happen in crude when you have resistance of where we traded from lower in terms of that low from the fall off on March 6th. But even looking at, I mean, check out some of these companies, right? Exxon Mobil. I mean, if you wanted a dividend company, you just went from 70 to 30 and you're only back to 43. You put this on some context on a monthly, I mean, you're back from 43 to, to yeah, October of 2000 prices. So for me, that's a tough one to, to, to understand the long-term potential, especially when um, things were, were well on the side of oil for a long time, and that's not the case anymore. Oil is going to be around, but in terms of sunlight, in terms of all that stuff, uh, energy. Energy is a different way. Natural gas, sunlight, renewables, all that stuff. Stay tuned, folks. We got a treat. We got our man, Larry Pesvento, coming up live with Trade What You See. And as we speak, s and P's flat. NASDAQ positive by 40. Dow positive by 7. Should be an interesting Monday in the market. Big week of earnings, folks. Stay tuned. Live programming all day at TFNN. We'll be right back.